What is a door, not a door? But it's a jar. Hmm. Yeah. All right, folks, welcome back. Today we're cruising around in the old Chevrolet. It's been a little while since I've driven this beast. First of all, the reason I even bought a new truck, and I don't think I ever talked about this on film yet, is because I was doing a routine rear end fluid change in this thing. Mind you, it has 248,000 miles. The rear end was rebuilt about 60,000 miles ago, so the rear end's not really that old. Um, so despite all that mileage, you know, the rear end is as fresh as anything, right? Well, I determined that there was ring gear play left and right. I want to just make this thing so it doesn't have rear end clunks while I'm driving it. And we'll see how long it lasts. Um, I think it'll hold up pretty pretty well overall, actually, but we'll see. So anyway, I'll pick up with you guys in the garage and explain what we're going to do today. Now oh, that bearing's bad. Cute. The bearings aren't great, but we're going to send it anyway, because this is just temporary. So now it's nice and sturdy. I do need to uh, get another shim in here, and then I'll test, start testing the backlash. We got a real redneck operation here, an absolute mess, but I did get the shimming good. The bearings are not great, but this is temporary, like I said before. We also did <clears throat> new shoes. And wheel cylinders, which is good. So we're gonna let the uh, diff cover and the rear end tack up a little bit and we're gonna uh, install her. I kind of just had an epiphany while that was all happening. And I was like, man, even if somebody did set the rear end up wrong, which probably is what happened to get that play, it probably wasn't damaged from use. I just kind of took a step back and I'm like, I am working this poor truck to death between throwing the motorcycle in the bed and towing the camper. Payload on this truck is only like 1,218 pounds. These older half tons, especially, had pretty low payload ratings. Um, that combined with the fact that this is a higher trim truck really made its you know rating suffer. With all that being said, it, it still did a pretty good job for what it was. Like I never really had major issues um, throughout the first seven, eight years that I owned this thing. When I started to have problems, is in 2020 when I bought my camper. The camper is 5,000 pounds dry. I purposefully bought that exact camper because it was the floor plan I wanted and it was the lightest one I could find. And you know, knowing that I didn't really have the most venerable tow rig here, right? This is not the, the, the best towing truck by any stretch of the imagination. And, and a lot of people will argue, oh, half ton truck payload numbers are BS because of, you know, government regulation, whatever, right? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But what I, the number that I did care more about was the rear axle rating. If I played all my cards right, I would be a little over payload, a little under rear axle rating, well under the front axle rating, and obviously under the trailer's ratings, and then under my max tow rating. So I really was kind of within all my numbers, the best I could be. And again, let's be honest, pretty much everybody everywhere overloads half-ton trucks, right? The difference, I think, for me, my scenario, is that I was overloading a half ton truck and towing long distances with it, towing in states that are, you know, in the middle of summer down south where it's very hot, and something like the transmission, you know, I had extra cooling on, right? So uh, the engine was bigger eventually, right? I put the six liter in it. All those things helped. And the brakes were always like good enough. I mean, I never really had any huge compliance. And that makes sense too, because I was kind of within my ratings from that perspective. But, um, my trailer's got really good brakes on it as well. But, uh, so like all those factors come into play, right? But the big one is that dinky little 8.625 inch rear ring gear that comes on these older Chevy trucks and the newer ones. It's just not a very robust unit. And I firmly believe that the newer ones are better because they have a bigger case. So that helps keep things from moving. But the, the whole casted casing of these older rear ends is very, very thin. I mean, I had a Ford Explorer that had the same rear end that was in this thing, basically. Um, they actually share a lot of parts, so that's not like an exaggeration. And unfortunately, I just think that Chevy kind of unrespect these rear ends for people who are actually trying to do work with them and do more than just like, you know, haul some firewood in the bed of the truck, right? And so when you do some heavier duty towing, little by little, and it takes 20, 30, 50, 100,000 miles, but you're just cooking that rear end fluid probably. 
and you know just wearing out the bearings wearing out the gears wearing you know, wearing everything out in there so that's not really great um, so needless to say the only real fix for that in my opinion for what I was doing with this truck would be to put a heavier duty rear end in it so you take a you know 14 bolt Chevy rear end or something like that which is doable people have done it it's a relatively common swap all that kind of thing you know you're gonna have to then re-gear the front differential because I don't even think those came with 342s in any application so there's other consequences to that for better or worse um, you know, it's just going to cost you probably two grand all, all in if you want to get a 14 bolt and you want to be able to re gear and do all this stuff. So it's just not going to be, you know, it's not going to be an insignificant job either. So that's fine. I mean, I could have done all that. I've obviously swapped the motor in this thing, done all this other work. But I just kind of hit a point where I was like, enough is enough. I spent so much time and money on this thing. It's still really not the ideal vehicle for, for the type of work that I'm doing, right? I'm doing I'm doing modern half ton, if not three quarter ton stuff with an old half ton truck. And that's just kind of a dangerous game to play. So I kind of decided that for it was the you know best for the truck's sake and the best for my sake to just kind of move on, get something that was a little heavier duty, really more suited to the application that I needed it for. And, uh, you know, and, and take the burden off this thing. You know, th what this truck is great for is bumming around town, going an hour or two away from home with a small trailer or, you know, just some weight in the bed. Like, that's what something like this is made to do. And it does it really well. And I love it for that. So, like, right now I'm just kind of driving to work. And it's like, I don't need a three-quarter ton truck to drive to work. I got the Camaro. I got the bike. I do have this for now if I decide to keep it. So, it kind of works out. And, and this thing owes me nothing. It's got a ton of great newer parts in it. So I could just pour a bunch of more miles in this thing, but empty and locally. So I'm not stressing myself out on these long trips and thinking I'm gonna break down. And you know, it just, I could extend the life of that new truck and uh, just not have to buy something for a longer period of time. So there is something to be said for having multiple vehicles. I do think it's a little bit excessive to have three vehicles plus a motorcycle, you know, three four-wheel vehicles plus a motorcycle. However, I do drive a lot. My commute's relatively long. So I put the miles on things. I mean, that's kind of my logic as to why I decided to upgrade finally. And there's a lot of people who might watch this video and be like, oh, you know, every new truck is junk and you should just keep the old ones running and da 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 And I had that mentality for 10 years, nine years with this thing I really did but and maybe it's just my specific truck and maybe if I had a 2500 I would be saying something different but I simply found that it was more trouble than it was worth trying to keep something this old doing hardcore daily duty towing out of state towing up 7% grades relatively close to max tow capacity I think a lot of people don't do that kind of stuff with their truck and that's great and that's fine if I was only local I never would have bought a new truck so I get it, like this is perfectly fine for anything, you know, within a hundred mile radius, let's say. <clears throat> it's when you get outside of that and things start to become more of a problem. You know, you can't just limp it home easily when you're 500 miles from home like you can when you're 50 to 100 miles from home, right? That's a huge difference. So just keep that in mind. You know, look at your, look at the type of driving you do, the type of towing you do, the type of hauling you do, and then determine if you really want an older truck and read 
rebuilt twice, once and then really needs to be rebuilt again. Um, you know, fair, not a crazy amount, but you know, three or f three U joints probably in its life. You know, each each front and rear of the axle uh, or the drive shaft. Um, did the rear yoke, transfer cases rebuilt. I mean, 